A Coast Guard cutter had set me adrift on a rubber raft a few miles from shore. When I got in close enough, I'd sunk the raft with its equipment and supplies. That way, if I ran into any questions on this supposedly deserted island, I might be able to get by with a shipwreck story. My name's Mike Nelson, professional diver. This trip, I was working for the government. If somebody was setting up a base here, they wanted to know it. The island seemed deserted, all right. Not a living thing in sight, except me. A radar installation, just as aerial observation had reported. It hadn't been used for a long time. What are you doing here? Might I ask the same question of you, sir? Yes, you might, but it wouldn't do you any good. Now, who are you? <laughs> There's no substitute for victory, is there? <laughs> My name's Gerard. John Gerard. E-P-A-L. E-P-A-L. What's that stand for? <laughs> Escaped prisoner at large. <coughs> yeah? Where'd you escape from? from a little island called Isla de la Tres Marias. How'd you get here from there? My raft. You might say the trip became a bit of a bore. You might say that you're a bit of a liar, too. Now, just a minute, old man. You may have the right to kill me, perhaps, but not insult me. Now, that penal colony is quite a distance from here. Do you expect me to believe that you made it here in a raft? Without instruments? Without food? Believe what you like. What's the difference now? Well, you've got to admit that it's quite a trip. How long did it take you? Ten days, thereabouts. Water ran out early. I've been here for three days. I suppose you're innocent of what they put you in there for, huh? huh? Innocent? <laughs> no. Very guilty. Uh, listen, old boy. You don't happen to have brought some food with you, do you? Yeah, I got some emergency rations down on my raft. I'll get you some. As soon as I take a quick look around, yeah? What's your idea? I forgot to tell you about the uh, camp on the other side of the island. Bunch of strange types. Pollywogs, I call them. They're in the water off the point most of the time. In gear like yours. Yeah. Wonder what they're up to. Well, uh, I really don't know, Ducky. I, uh, I didn't get close enough to find out. Why didn't you? Well, it's simple, really. I, uh, I'd rather be hungry than dead. Oh, that's 
much like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Johnny, lead me to your polywax. We made it to the other side of the island without being spotted. There they were, Johnny's polywogs. Just four of them. Four that I could see, that is. You hear him? You know that language? And I recognize it, but I don't understand it. I've heard it before, in Europe. Let's get out of here, huh? We wound up back at the lagoon. That seemed to be the safest jump-off point for an underwater survey of whatever it was that the polywogs had set up off the point. I don't know what I expected. Some sort of construction or installation, I guess. A submarine pen or a missile launcher, something like that. What I found was a cave. It was a special kind of a cave, apparently. From what I could see, part of it had to be above water. An underground warehouse with only one way in and out, underwater. Now this polywog business made sense. They had assembled more ammunition than I'd ever seen in one place before. Some of the crates were labeled in half a dozen different languages. Most of them weren't. But government experts would be able to tell where they came from, provided I could get the information to them. bombs. Could be enough of them here to blow up a city. Johnny had warned me that the polywogs were in and out of the water all the time. It wasn't safe for me to hang around much longer. I didn't have enough air to risk out swimming him, so I made sure that he wouldn't be able to follow me. I headed back to the lagoon. I had plenty to think about on the way. An island occupied by unfriendly, well-armed strangers and a British thief is my only ally. How far could I trust Johnny? You found it, Michael? Yeah. It's a warehouse. It's full of dynamite, full of ammunition. An underwater warehouse. I put nothing past these blokes. Oh, I'd like to get out of here. Just one of them before I'm packed in. It might be sooner than you think. They know we're here. Oh. I tangled with one of them. 
We gotta get out of here fast. Take it easy now, careful. Playing it carefully, Ducky. They don't know whether we're armed. Don't happen to have a rusty old gun or something like that, do you? I got a spear gun. Huh? My raft. Yeah, I saw you sink it. Raft, spear gun, rations and all. <laughs> all right, Ducky. Get yourself a handful of rocks and let's have at them. Pollywogs had us pinned down on the shore of the lagoon. Our only way out was underwater. That's why we loaded Johnny down with rocks. in his pockets took the place of a weight belt. Johnny took to buddy breathing like a pro. Question was, did we have enough air to make it to the raft? Now we were on my emergency reserve. Would it take us all the way? Fortunately, my equipment included two sets of reserve tanks. That'd get us back to the underground warehouse, all right. We had to get there. It was the only place where we had even a chance of staying alive till morning. More to this than a rabbit hunting. You can say that again. <laughs> Stuff like this floating around South America will mean big trouble. figure out what to do with it. How to blow it up, you mean? Yeah. Put it at the entrance. I can seal it off. Also bring the Coast Guard in. Had you to pick me up in the morning. Yeah. Look it out here. All through there. Whew. Don't suppose there's anything to eat in all that mess? Maybe the Pollywogs were saving up some kind of a surprise for us. Anyway, we spent the night in their arsenal without any visitors. Mike, this plan of yours to blow this place up, it's terribly important to me. These chaps, you see, these Pollywogs, I've been at them before, you know. Yeah, I kind of figured you were. I don't mean to get more than Mike, but... There was a girl I loved very much. I thought she was all I needed or wanted. And she was killed. I was in special services. They dropped us into the country to start communications for some revolution or other the home folks were brewing, you remember. 
That was where I met Maria. She was a splendid girl. Real top drawer, at least to me. Suddenly I wasn't content just blowing up this or breaking into that. Suddenly I, I'd found something that put a, a whole new coat of paint on the world, you know. I'm sorry, Johnny. How did it happen? A tank. It was the first day, too. And that was the day that did it. That was the day that did it for John Gerard Michael. There was nothing to go on for after that. There's always something to go on for, Johnny. You just have to find out what it is. No, you don't understand. Yes, I do. Life's rough at times. But that's no time to give up. <laughs> I didn't give up. What else is stealing but giving up? checks down here. If they come down when we're rigging the blast, we've had it. Oh, we can't do anything about that. I guess the best way to blow it now is with this dynamite. Using a grenade as a detonator. Diversionary action upstairs. That would do it. What do you mean? It would give you enough time to do the real job. I could hold them off if they come sniffing round for you. That's idea, but how you can do that? With some dynamite. You don't need it all, Ducky. And your spear gun. You know, like those flaming arrows the Red Indians are always hurling into your stockade back home. Uh, you're a brilliant genius, aren't you? Okay, let's get the work done. I had done the major part of the downstairs job. Now I had to rig my grenade detonator. Topside, Johnny was ready and waiting with his arrows. He knew he had to keep that diver from going into the water and spotting me. I was on the last lap of completing the underwater bomb that would seal off the arsenal. What I had to do now was rig a trip device so I could set it off from above water. That called for putting a heavy stone on the line so the thing wouldn't go off before I wanted it to. A hard tug would pull the line out from under the stone, and that would pull the pin on the grenade. 
the polywogs had managed to escape out of range of Johnny's spear gun. That meant that pretty soon they'd be coming into range of me. My line wasn't long enough. I tied the end to an inflatable buoy so I could locate it from topside when I got more line. But where I'd get that extra bit of line, I didn't know. to blow it. I've let them get to the raft. One of them's about to dive. I'm not ready. What? The line is too short. I need another line to splice onto it. Well, where is it, the line? I tied it onto that marker boy. Let's see if I can steal a line from them. No time, Michael, old lad. You just won't have the time. Johnny! Johnny! works, Mike. Hey, just picked your friends up. Well, good job all the way round, mate. You'll get a good pat on the back. Yeah, what about you? That's a U.S. cutter out there. What do I do, Johnny? I climb aboard her, Mike. I got it on a raft. I can leave on one. Gonna give up for good this time, huh? It looks that way to you, does it? I wouldn't like that, you know. Neither would she. She was a fighter, you said. Maria? Took a tank to stop her. I owe him three years, you know, in the Isla de la Tres Marias. Probably more now for taking French leave. Oh, it's less now, Johnny, after what you did here. The people who locked you up take a very dim view of secret warehouses full of ammunition. Um, you put a good word in for me, would you, Ducky? I'll talk the warden's ears off. Oh, no, no, I meant uh, with the captain out there, oh boy, of, uh, on your cutter. Don't worry. He won't throw you in the brig. I'll see to that. Oh, blimey, not that. All I want is a little something to eat. Let's go get it done. Hi. I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today.
This was Indian country, Ibarro Indian country, deep inside Ecuador. They were on the warpath, I'd just been told. Not for scalps, either. Ivaros cut off their enemies' heads. Well, Warren had his head on his shoulders, I was glad to see. Mighty glad. Warren Tucker and his wife, Carolyn, meant a lot to me. They had ever since I saved Warren from drowning after a foolish, unsuccessful robbery try. The reason wasn't foolish. He couldn't get a job, and he wouldn't take charity. And Carolyn hadn't eaten for days. I'd believed him, the judge had too. He'd suspended sentence. That was three years ago in Los Angeles. Now they were student missionaries to the Ivaro Indians of Ecuador. Godson. Well, say something to me. Oh, boy. Hi, Michael. <laughs> hey, you sure a beauty, kids. Just great. Oh. <laughs> Felt pretty good, believe me. I didn't know that I'd be holding him underwater soon to save his life. I had come to Ecuador on a diving job. On my way home, I'd stopped off to visit a young married couple in the back country. Morning, Warren. Oh, good morning. You see this book you brought me about the Navarro Indians? It's just great. Ah, glad you're enjoying it. That's all I heard yesterday when I stopped by at the hospital to ask uh, directions to your place. Hey, that hospital's only about a mile away from here, isn't it? Oh, by water, yes. It's quite a bit farther, though, through the jungle. Ah, a lot riskier, too, according to Dr. Bruni. He tells me this whole area around here is pretty dangerous, even when the Navarros aren't acting up. Yes, I know. We haven't had any trouble so far. Their chief, Rwanda, well, he seems to like what we have to say. And the way we say it. He even sends presents to the baby all the time. He does, huh? Yeah. Hey, I can't get over your presents, Mike. No kidding. Uh, I'm glad you liked them. Especially these books. You know, they're really going to help a lot. And the toys? Michael took every single one of them to bed with him last night. <laughs> Boy, he's your cutie. Yeah, I didn't hear him this morning when I woke up. Is he still asleep? I hope so. He had a real bad night last night. He was coughing and coughing. I think he's coming down with a cold. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Carolyn. Hey, what's this I hear about a little boy, huh? He's got a cold? I hope that's all it is. He's really sick? I don't know. But he coughed so much last night, his whole throat's all red and sore. We're going to have to get something for it. Yes. Oh, you mean from Dr. Bruni? I'll be glad to go in. Oh, thank you, Mike. I'd appreciate that. Maybe we'd better call him first, though, huh? Right. He might want us to take Michael in. <laughs> Warren Tucker, this is Dr. Bruni at the Mission Hospital. Warren Tucker, this is Dr. Bruni at the Mission Hospital. Over. Hello, Doctor. This must be mental telepathy. I was just about ready to call you. Over. Well, I'm not surprised, unfortunately. I just heard from Osgood at Station 4. They attacked his compound last night. Now he's completely cut off. And he will be until the government gunboat gets there. What's your situation? Well, it's nothing like that, Doctor. No sign of trouble here. Gee, I'm awfully sorry about Osgood, though. Yes, and I don't want that to happen to you. Now, that's the reason I'm calling, Warren. Stay inside your compound, all of you. OK, thanks. We will. I was calling about Michael, though. He's sick. Here's Carolyn. She'll tell you about it. Hello, Dr. Bruni. Uh, Michael isn't very sick. His temperature's only 99.9, .9, but he's very flushed, and he has a very hard cough. Yes? Any wheezing with it? Well, yes. And he keeps trying to clear his throat. Uh, it could be post-nasal drip or possibly a touch of croup. I'd like to see him, of course, but I can't leave my post. And it's not safe for you to bring him here. Now, what are we going to do? Let me talk to him. Uh, Doctor, this is Mike Nelson. I met you yesterday. There's something you've got down there that could help him, isn't there, if I came in and got it? 
Yes, we're well supplied here, but I'm not so sure that you can make it down the river. I'll make it. Very well. I'll have everything ready and waiting for you. Over and out. Okay. We'll pray for you. Thank you, my dear. I can always use that. You two better get back inside the compound huh? and close those gates there. Oh, in case of an attack, you have a gun? Of course not, Mark. Well, you better take this, then. Our refuge and strength is in God. Sure. I know that. We can always use that kind of faith, but, but just in case, huh? Just in case. I'm glad you made it, Mr. Nelson. So am I. Why, what happened? Anything? No, nothing. You all set? All set. Oh, boy, I'll say you are. Carolyn called again, Mike. The cough is worse. Michael can't seem to catch his breath. What do you think it is? Uh, sounds like croup, but without being there myself, Mike, I really can't tell. So I've assembled this medical arsenal to be safe. I hope you can handle it. Sure. These go too, don't they? It all goes. I gotta get there as fast as I can. You're all straightened out on this oxygen equipment, Mike. Yeah. The last report was a bad one. Watch yourself. I will. being able to see any danger didn't make me feel any safer. The Varos learned long ago that surprise attacks from undercover work best for them. almost halfway home now. Another thousand yards would do it. But the trouble was, I didn't dare run at full throttle. Maybe I should have risked it.
The arrows were no problem now. Not down this deep. I had something a lot more serious to worry about. Making it upstream at least a half a mile with the medicine. By this time, I was using up energy and air at a frightening rate. Much as I wanted to stay with it, I couldn't. I had to get this gear to shore now, even if it meant landing in the middle of an Navarro encampment. Wherever this was, it wasn't the Tucker compound. Even if I could get past the Navarros, how was I going to find my way through the jungle with a medicine? Just too much of a load, I guess. How's Michael? Maybe the medicine will help. Or the oxygen. Okay. Come on. The sooner the better, huh? Hey, take this. The medicine hadn't helped. So Dr. Bruni ordered us to start Michael on the oxygen. Immediately. Oh, Are you ready for this? Just about. Turn it on, huh? I'll regulate it here. Okay. Easy, baby. It'll be all right. Just wait one more minute. All right, Carolyn. Lift the tent up, huh? We can't thank you enough. Uh, he's my son, too, you know. My godson, Michael, had been stricken out of the blue. Something was choking off his breath, killing him slowly. For the past 10 minutes, the one doctor in this part of Ecuador, Dr. Bruni at the Mission Hospital downriver, had been doing the one thing that he could under the circumstances, trying to diagnose the trouble by radio. No, Mike, it isn't bronchitis either. Wrong clinical picture. The more time we spend this way, the less time we have to save him. Should we try the oxygen again? No, that won't help. I'm almost sure now that it isn't croup or any serious chest condition. This is Carolyn. It couldn't be much more serious, could it? Michael's dying. What are you going to do? Talk about it until he's dead? Carrie, please. Dr. Bruni's trying to do his best. He isn't doing anything he can. He's at that hospital and Michael's here. Mike. Mike, do you hear me? Yes, Doctor. Mike, she's right. I can't help the boy by remote control. Especially if the trouble's what I think. An obstruction of the windpipe. You're going to have to operate? Immediately. I'll be on my way to you in five minutes. You never get here, Doctor. Those Ivars would chop you to pieces. I can't let Michael die. I'll see you soon, I hope. Oh, wait a minute, Doctor. <coughs> Doctor, you get ready to operate. I'm going to bring Michael into you. You'll do what? How? You don't even have a boat. I don't need one. 
Now, you get ready. I'll be right in. Over and out. Oh, Mike, did you say that just to protect Dr. Bruni? No. Well, then why did you then? You know you can't bring Michael into him. Where's that box that I brought those presents to you in? Oh, here this. It's airtight and watertight. I had to fix that way so that uh, your things wouldn't get mildewed. You mean that's how you're going to do it? Going to do what? Take the first midget sub in Ecuador. Mike, are you sure it's safe? It's watertight. And he'll be getting all the air he needs from my tanks. Uh, yours, I should say. You're lucky for us that you brought him along with you when you came down here. Yeah, well, how is he going to get the air? Huh? Through your exhaust hose? That's right. Because I exhale. You know, we only use about a quarter of the oxygen in the air when we breathe. And that'll be all he needs. And when Michael exhales, the stale air is going to escape out here. That's right, through this one-way valve. Oh. There won't be any possible way that water can escape. Huh? There shouldn't be. <coughs> Carolyn, you're ready for Michael now. <coughs> Come on, darling. <coughs> Carrie, it's his only chance. Doctor, right away. He's only a baby. He means a lot to me, too. Are you sure he'll be all right? I think so. We've got to have faith, don't we? Give me a hand with this water and we'll take it down, huh? I couldn't swim too fast with cargo this precious, but that was just as well. It kept me from using up air too fast. Barros must have spotted my bubbles. 
I was far enough down, though, to be safe from that kind of attack. There was no way of escaping this danger. I couldn't run either. I'd have to fight. The alligator either didn't see me or didn't like what he saw. I figured we had only a few hundred yards to go. But I also figured that we didn't have enough air to complete the trip underwater. I cut in my emergency supply. That'd give us another two minutes. The instant we surfaced, I planned to detach the exhaust hose from my regulator and use it as a snorkel for the baby. That way I could keep the box underwater, safe from arrows. Mike Nelson at the Mission Hospital. Over. Warren Tucker, this is Mike Nelson at the Mission Hospital. Over. Doctor, he's all right. He's all right. I didn't even have to operate. Oh, thank God. He liked his little toy so much, he tried to swallow it. I gave that to him. Oh, Michael, your folks are going to be mighty happy about you. You know, I'm worried about them. I've been trying to get them on the radio. No luck. You're all right, sweetie boy. I'm going to call them again. Mike, I'm afraid the reason you got through with Michael is the Havaros are busy attacking them. I'm not going to believe that. Warren Tucker, this is Mike Nelson at the Mission Hospital. Over. Warren Tucker, this is Mike Nelson. Dr. Bruni. Is he all right? He's fine, fine. Mike got him here in time. Oh, thank God. Your son tried to swallow something he shouldn't, that's all. I removed it with the forceps. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mike will never be able to thank you enough. Tucker. Hey, how'd you make it here, Warren? The dugout from the Varro camp up the river. What were you doing there? We couldn't believe the Chief Rwanda had turned against us. So we went to see him, and we were right. He'd been sick. Delirious. And those witch doctors thought he was full of evil spirits. Yeah, and the only way to cure them was to kill some missionaries. So we gave him some quinine instead. Worked wonders, Doctor. Well, apparently. When we told him about Michael, he gave us a military escort down the river. You didn't take my gun with you. No. You risk your lives, huh? Oh, no. Well, didn't you? Yeah. But I just had to believe that I could make it. Well, so did we. For the same reason, Mike. We had faith, too. I'm Lloyd Bridges. You know, three-fifths of the world is covered by the sea. And how little most of us know about that underwater world. Go below with us again next week, huh? For another thrilling adventure in Sea Hunt. <laughs> <laughs>